This is Toasted with Revolution News and Information. I am here with a very special honored guest, David Fry. How are you doing, David Fry? Hey, I'm doing uh, very, very well. Better than uh, being in jail. <laughs> so, tell us, tell us your story from when I last spoke to you on the refuge till now. Tell us your story, man. Uh, since I left from the refuge, basically, um, I guess, you know, the FBI came in and we had that whole spiel thing going on there, um, turned myself in and the FBI interrogated me illegally. My lawyer, you know, told, or invoked my, uh, my rights there and they ignored that. Um, then we, of course we go to jail and, and, uh, all kinds of crap going on there. Um, I mean, it's just kind of a broad nine months to speak out, I guess, but this whole time, just a lot of corruption going on, um, you know, within the people arresting you, um, the place that they transport you, you know, the jail, there's more illegal stuff going on. And there's just the court system, illegal stuff going on. It's like every uh, part of this whole justice system, there's, there's all this illegal stuff going on. I noticed within the nine months. Um, I don't know if everybody heard, but they put me in a cell with uh, human feces on the walls and floor and stuff. And uh, it's just, you know, crap like that going on. <laughs> it's, uh, um, I mean, if you guys ask more specific stuff, I can, I can answer those. But it's just too broad to really, what you want to know? We're, we don't have a time limit here, so you can basically bring forth anything you want. Um, I guess, you know, I don't want to bring up anything negative. I, I just want to keep it positive, man. What What is it like to stand up for everybody's rights? You were the last one off the refuge. My friend Rage Wolf said that you had the testicular fortitude to do something that nobody else got anybody to do, which is... Tell the FBI to say hallelujah. How does it feel? Um, basically, uh, I guess, I guess, uh, I just asked, you, did you ask why I said that? I kind of missed a little bit. No, I said, how does it feel to do that for everybody in this country? You know, it's, it's, um, I was just doing what was coming natural to me. Um, you know, I was really, it, it feels great, I guess, to be able to stand up, you know, for, for the rights and stuff. Um, I wasn't doing it for anyone specifically. I was just, like I said, I was just doing, came natural as a human being, you know, defending what you believe in. Um, and I, I think, Sometimes people give me maybe too much credit. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. It's just, it, it, I guess it's all right. It feels weird being out for sure. Everything's kind of gone some chaotic and whatnot to just now it's uh, <laughs> normal, I guess. I'd like to ask a question. Yeah. How do you feel now about knowing that the system is so infiltrated? Um, that's, that's a, yeah, that is a problem. I feel, I feel like, uh, obviously the good people aren't, I guess, exposing those infiltrators, um, maybe they just don't even know that they're in there. You know, a lot of these informants that we had with that infiltrated, you know, obviously the, the whole thing in Oregon, people didn't know they were infiltrators, but people, um, I think, I think most organizations have infiltrators in them. Um, I'm not sure how we can fix that problem. We probably got to, um, actually, you know what? I was going to say we should probably expose him, but you know, believe this, there's a guy that was in, uh, in jail when we were in, in jail there. He, he actually exposed the informants and, 
and he was charged for impeding federal officers for doing that. Yeah. So, so it's technically illegal. The government has made it illegal to expose informants, believe it or not. Um, I believe it. I, I honestly, this, this problem, I, I wish I could say what we should do, but uh, it wouldn't probably fly so well. Um, we just got, we just got to stand together. Yes, understand. You know, um, there, but there's, there's, I think every militia network, there's probably at least one FBI in every single main you know, known network. Um, they're all keeping tabs on all the leaders are being threatened to not act. Um, so it's, I know I'm, I'm, I'm well aware that this is a, a huge problem. Do you think that some of the infiltrators are actually provocateurs themselves? Um, Where they would incite? Yes, I do think there are uh, a lot of those uh, within most of the most of the networks, and then of course they'll probably hire some crazy stuff during an event to go do that that kind of stuff. I know Occupy uh, Wall Street had the same problem. Um, apparently at this organ, you know, one year, there was some people that were saying, they're telling people to start trying to burn some of the vehicles or buildings or whatever. They got kicked out. Um, you know, the ones trying to incite uh, to destroy the property. So they're there. Um, they're there. Thank you for answering my questions. Yeah, I hope I answered them correctly. My mind's a little bit fuzzy, so it might be kind of like. Uh, <laughs> yeah, hey, that's all right, man. That's all right. So, we, you know what? Uh, for the beginners out there, I'm going to ask stupid questions that I believe are stupid to me, but may not be stupid to other people. So, what started all this? I already know that, but please enlighten us from your point of view. Okay. Did you? I'm sorry. Did, did, I, did I miss a question? Everybody says it is. Um, so let. Can you tell us, like, from where it began to uh, where you, it ended, basically? With the whole Hammond situation? Yes. The Hammond situation, that's still ongoing. Um, I wish, I, I don't feel comfortable saying some of the things I know about that, just because it's still ongoing. Um yeah, yeah, the uh all I'll say is that the FBI, you know, there's groups in our government that are just real nasty people who will use all means necessary to silence people. Um and they'll go to any lengths to do that. And so it's just people I just don't think Maybe maybe a lot of people do, but there this this corruption in our country is is astounding, sick. And how I mean how you saw it with the FBI. I mean how they didn't charge Hillary Clinton. I mean how can how can that happen? I mean, she's blatantly violating the law. So that just shows how crooked our system is, how lawless it is. So um, I mean they'll they'll do anything, go to any lengths to preserve their power. And uh, until people realize what's at stake, they're going to continue to follow that, um, that path. Wow, man. Uh, I, I would definitely like to have you on again, uh, especially tonight. Um, I'd like to keep in touch with you. You've already got my Facebook. Um, 
I feel I feel like I'm doing this wrong, but you know what? Uh, on the hangout tonight, if you're available, what time does the judges uh, round table start? Judges, grand jury, administration, Dixie, anyone? The grand jury for what? Oh, you. It, yes. What's the number for tonight? I mean, yeah. What's the what's the? Could you tell? David, a little bit about the uh, calls that we've been covering. Um, well, I guess the best way to put it is allowing uh, Judge DW to get on because he's better at explaining. I'm just the researcher. <laughs> I'm the researcher and the mouthy one. So I do more of the standing up for people, and he does more of the explaining. <laughs> so here he is. All right, what do you want to know, Toast? I'd like you to tell David Fry about tonight's uh, show with the with the Continental Marshals, judges, and grand jury. Well, tonight actually is the We the People on Colorado and the gathering of the judges. Uh, they'll start off at 9.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so I've just got to do the time zones. Um It'll start off with We the People, be the Grand Jury Assembly at 9.15 to, nine, to 10, uh, actually 9.15 to 10 Eastern Standard Time, and then from 10 to whenever, it's uh, the gathering of the judges. And Judge so might be, uh, we can probably talk. <clears throat> we can probably talk to uh, Judge Johnson about bringing him on real quick. Yeah. Uh, that that would be awesome. Um, if you're available tonight, David, I don't want to interfere in the schedule that you have. Not, not much of a schedule. It's just kind of random. Random. Everything's just random right now. Well, here, I'll give you the call number then. Uh, actually, I plan to have him on the Hangout tonight so he can uh, be our guest and uh, be on oh. their show. Because he doesn't have a phone right now because the FBI still has it. Yeah, they still they still got my phone and my, my flash drive, my laptop, um, my wallet with all my credit cards and stuff in there. They make it such a pain of butt to get anything back. David, I don't know if you'll remember me. Right before um, everything started collapsing there, I was on a phone call with you asking what you guys need and I was ordering from Amazon paper plates, plastic utensils, styrofoam cups. And that box was shipped, but the snacks, like I had ordered cookies and candy bars and things, that was that package was a little bit delayed. Um, but when everything started falling apart there, and that one utensils box was shipped out, it was never shipped back or returned or anything, so they still have that box and evidence too. I think they're holding all of the artifacts. The artifacts? From that occupation, you know, all the packages that were shipped and not opened yet. and. Um, Probably just everything that they could collect from that. I think they're holding all of it. The, you talk about the Paiute stuff, right? No, no, I mean mm -hmm. all of their evidence things. Oh, our, our evidence. Yeah. Um, I, I call them artifacts. I'm sorry, but it's <laughs> it kind of kind of fits in. You know, a box was shipped out. It wasn't returned, so they must be holding it. Supplies, just supplies that you guys needed. I called you a couple of times when you were out there. Okay, okay. Um, did I did I answer? Oh yeah, we yeah, have we talked. Yeah. Okay. I told you I was just the mom with a couple of sons your age. Yeah, no, uh, I it's you know little trivial things, but you have been through so much since that time that I hardly expect you to remember. <laughs> yeah, my, mind, my memory is really foggy with... Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. I try to remember. I mean, usually, usually it comes back. Um, little trigger trigger events will bring the memory back. I'm sure, there's something in there. I called you the night that the boy was murdered and Pete was arrested. I told you what was happening, and Pete said to get the women and children out. That was me. Mm. I, I bet you remember this one. Thank you, man. Thank you. I can't believe it. Thank you, man. And I just kept on repeating myself like a stupid turd. <laughs> My bad. No. I, I don't remember. I don't remember. It was uh, called a rev radio that you were doing. Okay. Somehow um, you got through the rev radio. Uh, I'd like to uh, have some insight on that, but not on air. Not on air. I do remember was, calling. What? I think. Who, who was it? Wasn't it Rev Radio that I called that then all the, the trolls were coming, like we're taking calls? Yeah. I, I wasn't a troll. I was thanking you, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. But um, but the, we, but there was trolls. Like someone, I think, threatened us saying, we're lucky that we had the FBI there because they, they were planning to do something bad or something where they're you know, along those lines. Uh, I don't remember that. Damn. I don't remember that one. Okay. Um. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's just I called called several people out that during that last two weeks. Just trying to. Uh, if like I I asked you if you remember Judge Bruce Doucet, and well, I actually host his show on Sundays every Sunday. I do remember Judge Bruce Doucet. He was supposed to be the one, well, obviously the judge. Um for the, the grand jury indictment thing that they were trying to do down there, right? Yep. Yeah, um, I was... I don't know what the heck that really totally was. Um, it, it's I've common, never heard of something. It, it's common law is what it is. Yeah. Yeah, I... I, uh, I kind of find out from my lawyer about it a little bit, but... Well, I he says... Like... <laughs> he said our government doesn't acknowledge that. I... Uh, uh, I would like to extend the knowledge that I have gathered and the knowledge that I continue to gather to you and also extend the olive branch that hey, if you want to come forth with anything at all look me up man I, I've followed you on Google Hangouts you got me on you got me places we're good there so you know I offer my channel to you basically Revolution News and Information on YouTube I have the yeah. I have the original defend your base right here, and he defended his base up until the very last second. I, I swear to God, he did. I heard that on the phone. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Can T ask a couple of questions? What? Yeah. Can T ask a couple of questions? I don't mind. Hey, hey, David. This is T. I'm more of the um, of a right, or I'm sorry, a left side of the paradigm, and um, I just had a few things to say, actually, and I'd like to know if you had feedback. First, I'd like to thank you for being really, I guess, the only patriot that I have um, some compassion for. I'm sorry, I, uh, if, we, if we don't speak frankly, um, we're not going to find any common ground. And I'm talking about Americans in general, but I'm just letting you know where I'm coming from. But first, I'd like to thank you for your peaceful way of um, conveying um, it, that Islam is not our enemy. Mm. And secondly... Um, I just wanted to inform you, I know you've been gone for a while, but while you were gone, it came out that the FBI did entice the shootings in Garland, Texas at the Pamela Geller Draw the Prophet Muhammad contest. There was an FBI agent involved and he told the shooters to tear up Texas 
And um, that was very shocking to me. And it made me think a lot about you guys and what's going on there and what happened at the shooting range. And I'll do the talking on that because I understand there are legal issues and uh, you probably have had enough and really don't want to talk about that. But those are the few things I wanted to say. And, and truly from, from my heart, thank you for your peaceful way of conveying your ideas and to make it clear that Islam, Islam itself is not our enemy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's it's it goes more deeper than that. That's actually you know we're seeing a lot of um, media using divide and conquer tactics. Obviously, it's, it's um, some sort of protocol within their deceptive uh, group or whatever. So they're using you know this whole anti-Islam thing as as a smoke screen. You know, getting people more divided, but you know, I, I saw through it and I was just hoping everybody do see it too. So I thanks for thanks for seeing that. Acknowledging that. Hey, a lot yes. of people <laughs> a lot of people don't want to say anything good about Islam, I guess, in a sense, just because it brings a lot of negativity. I have an open channel, I really do. That's good. That's, That's good. good. Yes, it's very much appreciated, and I was very thankful to be invited, and I'm, I'm truly honored, David. <laughs> you're just such a little stinker. You're old enough to, you're, <laughs> I'm old enough to be your mother, so I can call you that. But that meant a lot to me personally. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for, for I guess, believing in me. Yes, uh, would you believe our, uh, I believe political reasons, but our channel was actually striked. <laughs> striked for what? Uh, it was striked for the YouTube spam and, uh, misleading, uh, terms of service, which is, and it was on a show that wasn't even streamed yet, so go figure. Huh. Yeah. But that's why we're doing a recording right now, and I can I can do recording on the fly. Uh, I've got the camera up in some of the video, and uh, the revolution will not be televised in the rest of the video. Uh, I hope that's all all right. It should be, you know. We're bringing the truth out right here, right now. Well, you know, it's true. The revolution will not be televised. In fact, our government has laws in place. You know that we don't know about that that's doing that. I think maybe you guys heard about it or not, but there's the, um, you know how there's Department of Education, Department of you know, Drugs and all that stuff, but there's yeah. a Department of Media, something, something along those lines. I don't know the exact term, but there's a department that monitors the media. And there was an article that came out about that latest Iron Man movie, how the government told them that they couldn't talk about certain things or introduce certain things because it's too real. Um, right. And so if people don't think our media is censored or you know, all that stuff for governmental issues, I mean, they're, they got their heads up there, but it's happening. And I'm sure all the medias have stopped talking about it. Uh, or, 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 I mean, we're told to not talk about the protest, the organ thing in a positive light. They have to only talk about it in a bad manner. And Alex Jones just kind of disappeared off the radar. As soon as he was gone, I everybody agree. should have known, you know, that something was happening after that. So I'm pretty sure he was contacted, told not to talk about it. They're threatening people, threatening people to, um, that if they talked about it and people supported them and went out and did something, that they would be held liable. So that's why a lot of people didn't talk about it. Well, you can talk about anything you want on here without censorship i've got a pretty nice disclaimer in the uh description below if anybody wants to see it so uh that way it covers everything <laughs> freedom of speech I, is I'd, go ahead i'd like to i'd like to say something about that i've re just like in the past couple of days have heard about in iceland they have a pirate party is the name of the um 
political party. And it's actually here in the United States now, Massachusetts has a pirate party, and I'm just looking into that. And um, in the future, if anyone looks it up and would like to talk about that, it looks very promising. And they are even offering Edward Snowden asylum there in Iceland through the, the pirate party. And it looks like something that maybe we can left and right come together on. Pirate, pirate party. <laughs> yeah, it, it even sounds cool, huh? Yeah, it's the pirate party. And I know in Massachusetts, they are uh, working on legalizing marijuana. Uh, they have a candidate there. Again, I haven't researched a lot on it, but it, it looks pretty neat. Okay. Yeah. Um, sounds interesting. Sounds interesting. Uh, David, I, I would like to thank you for bringing up the whole media thing because, you know, I talk to a lot of friends around here where I live and they don't believe that the media is controlled. They think that we have the freedom of the press. And I'm really glad you brought that up because I want to make sure to share that with the people that I talk to because I, I keep trying to tell them that it's controlled. Everything that, that we see, you know, the government says yay or nay as to whether or not they can put that out there for us. And so I'm really glad that you brought that out because um, I know a lot of people that really, they think you're a hero for the American people. So you bringing it out will really help to get people educated in this country as to what's really going on. You know? yeah. and just to throw and I, one more thing out about the, that whole censorship is, is our government actually also censors uh, video games. I'm a big, big video game you know, fan, obviously. Um, but I know a lot of people, have, you know, have heard that game Grand Theft Auto, but I've actually read that our government suppressed or, or censored in the video game where, you know, it's like you go around, you're stealing cars and, you know, things like that. But in the game, you can drive through chain link fences, but originally you couldn't. It was, it was made to be in real life. If you try to drive through a chain link fence, it doesn't go through just crash but in the game they make you believe that you can do these things so they purposely mislead people to believing you know what's possible or whatnot you know so they can catch them i guess in a sense because <laughs> in real life if they tried it they, they would get stopped but so so a lot of our government suppresses information that actually could help uh i guess just know just know what you can and can't do in a sense they just want to keep us dumb kind of gives us subliminal messages when we're playing the games or whatever to make us think that we can do something that, of course, physically we can't do. I'm going to tell my sons about that because they play that game. Yeah, yeah, I um, I don't play that game. I just don't think it's a moral game. Um, yeah, me either, but my sons, they drive me nuts playing it. Yeah, I never, never bought it. I played, I played the old ones a couple times with some people, but I never really got into it too much. Um, yeah, they like to play a lot of online games, too, and you can tell where some things there are censored, too, with the online stuff, too. I can't remember what the name of it is, but they play some of the online games, you know, where you can play with other people and, you know, have conversations and stuff. And I keep trying to tell them, would you quit playing those things? You know you're being listened to while you guys are talking, <laughs> you know. Well, I think I think the not not when you're playing a game where i think that whole being listening into thing is a um is a scare tactic they like put out there by the government i just don't think they have the resources to be listening to everybody they just don't um oh okay <laughs> yeah i mean they they really don't they don't have the resource to do that they they you have to be targeted there's a specific reason they they want to be after you like a lot of people are scared you know, the government's listening on their phones and stuff like that but Unless you're actually really making noise, then they won't pay attention to it. But um, we give I gotta them, say, we give them way too much credit about their good point. Good point. I gotta say, even when I was watching you guys on mainstream media, I wasn't listening to what they were saying. I was busy cheering you guys on, and you know, I was like, "Man, they're lying!" You know, and yelling at the reporters. And you know, my family was like, "Can you calm down?" <laughs> so I didn't believe what they were saying, but you know, I was like, "Yeah." 
you know, and I was kind of sad when it didn't go down quite the way we were hoping it would. But, you know, I'm really glad that you guys got out. And I know you guys still have some more challenges ahead of you, you know, and I'm praying for you, all of you, you know, but I, I really love what you guys did out there. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. Um, it was, again, I, I mean, just a lot of people felt like they had a calling to be out there. So, I mean, that's not, it's not, I don't really like want to take credit for anything like that because obviously I think it goes to a higher power. You know um, something? I actually wanted to go myself. Uh, <clears throat> the only reason why I didn't go is I didn't have transportation out there. However, I, I did meet another person in my town that actually wanted to go as well. But you want to know something? I was actually blessed by not going because I was able to learn so much about what is going on in the real world. I'll pass it back to you. Yeah, yeah. It's just... Um, everybody has a purpose, I guess, in a sense, you know, people that were told not to go on the last day, like the boy died, you know, it's just, everybody has these reasons to go or not go. And then of course the people who left, left because they had to, you know, they were told to maybe. It's just weird how everything works out. Yeah, I can, I can, I can sit around for a little bit. All right. Well, thank you. This has been David Fry, and I am toasted with Revolution News and Information. Uh, like, subscribe, and share. And uh, I'm also going to include a link to David's channel here, Defend Your Base, in the description below. And I appreciate him so much, and I am so honored to have him here with us. Thank you again, David. It was a pleasure to be here. Keep spreading the news. Oh, oh, one more thing I forgot to say is people need to look up. This is this is my next big thing is. Go ahead. People need to look up the Invention Secrecy Act of 1951. And you start you see all these problems going on right now for for like the oil pipeline. And then how, you know, they're saying they wanted the uranium from the uh, Hammonds and perhaps the Bundy Ranch. You know, there's uranium that they want. But this Invention Secrecy Act, what it does is they have been suppressing technology that threatens the establishment of the atomic energy people or the oil companies or the economy. Um, and so among one of the things that are being suppressed by law is solar panels that exceed 20% efficiency. And I posted it on... What? Yeah, by law. It's... Uh, they have a law in place that suppresses technology that they think will threaten the economy or, or the power grid or the oil companies. And um, I can get more into it later, perhaps. But people need to research that law, the Invention Secrecy Act of 1951. And then you'll, then you'll realize why we haven't got off of oil or... or you know, I was wondering about that. And my daughter was talking about getting solar panels and that... But they, they can't exceed 20%? That's right. They have a law that keeps them from going past 20% because it's considered a national security threat. And Oh, my goodness. Right now, our, our solar panels have been running at like 10 to 15%. 15% is really, really expensive. But there's, there's technology that has been suppressed that would exceed 20%. Um, and they just, they just don't allow it, you know, give it to us. So do you think it's about money or do you think it's about power or both? Oh, it's it's about money and power. Um, should I just give you guys the whole scoop on this one real quick? It's not. Yeah, please. So what's going on? This is this is really serious. What I'm about to say is we remember the Cold War, how we decommissioned, you know, all our nuclear weapon weaponry with the Russians. You know, we made a deal. Yep, and, I remember that. And so. We have nuclear companies you know, running around 
that are burning up their uranium fuel rods, but you need spent fuel rods for the war, to, to, to use those for war. Um, we've been using depleted uranium as bullets that we use in Iraq. Uh, our government uses the, the leftovers of the nuclear reactors for war. So if we switched over to solar companies or solar panels and have no more use for these nuclear power plants, then they can't prove that it's only used for energy. Like our government, if they had continued to use these nuclear plants, everybody in the world would know that the only reason that they're running is for war, to use these, the byproduct. And so that's why they, they won't switch away from the nuclear you know, power plants is because um, they want that byproduct. Um, and so that's just causing a lot of problems. You know, they're all leaking. You know, they're, it's just becoming uh, a, a dangerous situation, how they're running right now. In fact, uh, well, I just, just leave it at that. Um, it, it's all about war. war so, and so that's probably why it's hard to find, like, wood-burning stoves these days and stuff like that, you know. EPA regulations! Our- I mean, like you talk about, you were talking about, you know, solar panels and uranium and that, and I'm thinking about the pipeline thing going on in North Dakota, you know, with the Native Americans there. I'm in Minnesota, so I'm right by them, <laughs> and um, I'm thinking all of, you know, that all of this is just about, you know, they don't want us to be self-sufficient because if we're self-sufficient, then we can stand on our feet and say no more. That's right. And that's another thing is anytime you do something the government doesn't like, what's the first thing they want to do is they cut your power. You know, that's, they always threaten right. to cut your power. Um, so, of course, they don't want people on solars. But, but the, uh, the ultimate reason is, is it's being used for war. They need that byproduct. They need, they need the reactors to constantly burn the freaking fuel rods to make it depleted. Somewhat depleted. <laughs> yeah, because for some reason, war brings money and it also tears down the population. They take right. away our young men and women when they when there's a war. You know, and, the, and of course, they always make money off of war. Oh, yeah, the big people in charge are, are funding both sides. History's proven that. Um, and all, oh, and, and they keep protecting the oil companies because all our weapons of you know, vehicles of war use uh, oil, <laughs> so they need they need oil, They're constantly being pumped. It, you got so much information. I'm going to check out your channel. <laughs> I actually know a lot about the electric industry in Texas, anyway, and it is such a racket. Our politicians are invested. Not only I know about the ele- electrical electricity industry um, alone, the same company that owns the power plant owns the TDSP, which is you know the person who comes and the company that comes and actually uh, maintains the power lines, you know, and your meters and whatnot. Also owns the retail pro- uh, provider, who is the company who sends your bill and customer service. They own all three, but it's three separate entities, you know, so so it looks legitimate. Then our policy.